I have so many books to unbox today. So today is going to be a book haul and book unboxing. So join me as I unbox all of these books. It's gonna be everything I've been buying for myself, everything that I've been sent or been given. Some of these books are a lot of charity shop books and a lot of them are secondhand, but then some of them I have just bought and some of them I've been sent by publishers. So let's just crack on and see what we've got in these boxes because I'm too excited and I've been waiting to like rip these open until I can film a video with you. So, so let me just put these on the floor and we're just gonna dive right in because I cannot bloody wait. Some of these I know what they are that I ordered them and some of them are surprises. So I don't know, I have requested a few things. So I'm hoping the things I requested are gonna be in there, but you never know. Um, so we will see what we're gonna get, but we will start with some publisher mail because that's just pretty exciting. This one is from One World which is a publisher and they publish some of the books on the Women's Prize. So let's open this package and see what's inside. I can't wait. Oh, I've ripped it. I was right, it's a Women's Prize one. And one that I've actually already read. I read the digital copy of this, but this is Night Bloom. And I like this cover, but I do think I prefer maybe the American cover or the hardback cover or whatever it was. I'm not sure that, now I've actually read this book, I'm not sure that this cover is completely conveying the story. This also looks very young adult and I don't think it's being published as a young adult book. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is a young adult book. Actually, maybe that would make sense if it is young adult. It is very much a coming of age story. Basically all following these two girls who are best friends when they're young. They are cousins and they grow up together in Ghana. And the whole first half of the book follows the first girl's perspective and then the second part of the book follows the second girl. And they both also have very different opportunities in their life. You follow them from when they're young girls and young teenagers up until like their late adulthood when they've got their own kids themselves. But basically they have this massive falling out when they are teenagers and then you kind of follow the story you figure out why they fell out what went wrong and also what kind of happened to make them grow up to be the way that they are there's a lot that i really liked about this book but i will save my full review for my wrap-up video that i'm going to be doing i would say this book reminded me both of americana by chimamanda ngozi and also it reminded me of my brilliant friend by elena ferrante so if you like both of those books i would definitely check this book out and now it's got the women's prize long list sticker on there as well these books are actually so hard to find um which is why i had to request some of them from the publishers because literally you go into shops and they're not there because they pulled them all off the shelves to be able to put these uh women's prize long list stickers on them which is kind of funny so even though they've done the announcement and like announced the women's prize they don't then actually let you buy the books because they've pulled them from the shelves which okay let's do this one next as well this could be from a publisher because it's handwritten but it doesn't say lid and usually like when because my like obviously my username is lid so that's usually a way to tell if someone sent me something from a publisher but this is my full name i don't know probably it is a book imagine if it's not oh yay this is another women's prize one and another one i could not find anywhere ah it's skinnier than i thought that's quite exciting <laughs> because i'm obviously reading the whole of the women's prize long list i'm currently filming my second vlog for it. I've read three of the books for that vlog and I need to finish them off. Maybe I'll do this as the final book in that vlog. Um, this is In Defense of the Act by Effie Black and also obviously long listed for the Women's Prize. And as you know, I do not like to read blurbs, but especially for the Women's Prize, I've not been reading blurbs because I'm trying to just read them all and read them all like quite quickly. And I feel like if I read the blurbs, I'm gonna have preconceived like, notions of which ones I'm going to like and which ones I'm not going to like and I'm going to just not want to read the ones that I think I won't like which is normally obviously fine to <laughs> read books you don't like but because I'm challenging myself to read every single one I don't want to read too many of the blurbs because I'm actually scared that I just won't pick them up. But I do think that this is following a character like a, a very strange and unusual character maybe and I think that the character is kind of obsessed with the idea of people ending their own life and saying that that is like she's defending it. I think it's going to be a little weird one. That's what people have said. So I'm actually very excited about this one and I'll read it very soon. And I actually really like this uh, cover. I like online. I think it looks a bit flatter, but in person, like I think it actually is quite effective and really works. So that is in defense of the act. The second one on my little woman, woman's prize stack. This is great. I'm so excited to finally have these books as well. Okay, so this one next. This also, yeah, this is from a publisher. This is from Simon & Schuster. 
who I'm not sure what they publish either. It's very difficult to um, figure out because like obviously with publishers, there's all these different imprints as well. So even getting in contact with the right people who are actually publishing books is kind of difficult. But let's open this up. Oh, it's one of these ravioli packages. It's kind of difficult and I always like burst them open. Okay, now I've got one. Oh, nice. Oh, it's wrapped up. It's pretty in tissue paper. So what is it? It's a hardback. It must be one of the more recent ones, if it's a women's prize one. Oh, it's not a women's prize one, but I did see this recently. Oh my God, I love this cover. This is Fruit of the Dead and I have seen this everywhere. And I'm so happy to be sent it. This is described as ancient Greek. Greece meets Succession, which like the TV show Succession. I mean, cannot like that is, I'm so obsessed with that. <gasps> I love this cover so much. I just love the trend of like classic art being on book covers. Like I, I'm absolutely obsessed with that as a thing. So this is Fruit of the Dead by Rachel Lyon. Oh my God, look, <laughs> a really cool bookmark. I love that. That is so cool. Yeah, and it says, Ancient Greece meets succession. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. That is so cute. I kind of wish this was a sticker so that I could stick it up somewhere because I actually love just the way that that looks. That looks so, so cool. There's this horse in the background as well that's kind of carried over on the back. But let me just give you the kind of vibe. It's a contemporary reimagining. Yes, this is what I, this is. I think I did actually request this one because it was described as contemporary reimagining of Persephone and Demeter over the course of one summer on a lush private island. Oh my God, exploring who holds power in the modern underworld. Sorry, this sounds so good. I'm so excited about this. I love retellings. I love like rich people behaving badly. I love like Succession. And what's that other TV show that was so, so good? White Lotus. It's kind of giving me White Lotus vibes as well. And this is like one of the prettiest book covers I've seen in a long, long time. Thank you so much to Scribner for sending this to me. Okay, and next up, let's open up this package from Wob, which is books that I bought myself because I love Wob so much. I use them all the time. It's the first place I go to whenever I want to buy a book. It is all secondhand books on there and they are such good prices honestly it's amazing so i always buy books from that and i've also always got deals going on as well like some of these i got in like a if they're under five pounds anyway which is also amazing you can do like three for four so you get four books for the price of three when they're all under fiver like can you beat that no you cannot so let's open this package up do a lucky dip i know that i have a series in here so oh it's like double wrapped for some reason should probably be using scissors on me off okay here we go they are packed in tight let's see what this skinny one is first because i don't think that's in the series <gasps> yay this is the book club book for this month i'm so excited about this so if you don't know i host a reading around the world book club and every single month we read a different book from a different country and we do live shows where we spin this randomized wheel and we figure out the country that we're going to be doing and then we find the book and for our live show recently, we span the wheel and we all decided that we were going to be doing Pakistan. So this is the book that we ended up choosing. I'm so, so excited. If you did see the live show and you did not join on Fable, then you might be slightly confused. We decided at the end of that live show that we'd actually be doing All My Rage by Sabah Tahir. And then we changed our minds because a bit of discussion that was going on in the Fable. Basically, that is just a story about Pakistani diaspora rather than actually based in Pakistan, even though some of the book I think takes place in Pakistan. The author themselves is an American Pakistani. And so we wanted a book that was much more heavily based in the country, like hearing from a Pakistani voice about the country and something that is very rooted there which is this author and this book. I have heard a lot about this author actually. There is another book that he wrote called Exit West that I can put up on the screen that I've heard is honestly amazing but this I think is his debut book or at least one of his very early books but he's also been like shortlisted for the Booker Prize before and like very like won many awards. And I think this book is basically about a man who's living in Pakistan and he loses his job and then just basically goes on a like huge downward spiral and he starts having an affair with his like rich best friend's wife. I think it's a commentary on like contemporary Pakistan and like stark class differences and like politics and corruption that kind of thing. So I'm really, really excited about this. Okay, and then 
The next three books in this are all part of a series and I'm so excited about it. Oh my God, they're so pretty. <gasps> okay, so the series is, <gasps> they're gorgeous. Oh my God. So the series is the Graceling Realm series of which I had the first book. <gasps> Look how shiny these are. Oh my God. So I already have Graceling and I didn't have the next books in the series. I actually don't know what order this goes in. Oh, that's kind of a shame that this was like the only one that's not sparkly. So this is the first book, Graceling. And then I think it's Bishop, no, Fire is the next one. Oh my God, I love these. These are just the ordinary copies, I think. They're not special editions. And then I think it's Bitter Blue, which is unfortunately nowhere near as sparkly. And then the last one is Winter Keep. These are a young adult series and they, the first one came out like years and years ago and I read it years and years ago, but I bought the whole series because I'm doing a really exciting read along in April with Tasmin and Sean. And we're gonna be doing some live shows as well. So please join us in this read along. It's gonna be so fun. I was so excited to take part because I remember loving this first book, but I read it probably 10 years ago and never then finished the rest of the series. And I've also heard that this is actually a series that gets better and better, but I'm also just really excited to see if it like holds up. And we're also reading them along on Fable. So if you want to join us, I will link the Fable link down below. Or maybe if you've even already read them and you just want to see what our thoughts are as we're reading them, that'll be kind of fun as well to join the Fable link. So this is going to be my mission for April. I'm really excited. Though some of these, they get a bit chunky by the end. So it's going to be like maybe a bit of a challenge to read them as quickly as I want, but I love the way they look and I'm really happy to have these on my shelf. Although that has annoyed me, that this is the only one that doesn't like, it's kind of annoying me. Is that annoying you? Because these all look so pretty together. Why would it be different? Like so consistently different? I don't know, that's kind of annoying. Anyway, we'll see. Have I got this order wrong? I'm not sure if I've got this order right. I also have not told you about this series at all, but basically they're, they're set in a world where, basically this series is set in a world where people can be born with graces, which basically means like a very like unique type of power. In the first one, you are following Katza, who has been given the grace of being able to kill anyone and she feels like she's like very cursed by this grace she's used as a royal assassin she gets sent on a mission it kind of like unravels into this like wider plot and in this world and i think also the whole series is take it takes place like over quite a considerable amount of time which is what i love as well in the series so i don't know where it's gonna go and i'm very excited to read this with sean and tasman hold on let me move this stack oh no yeah of course it's fallen of course oh no and while we're talking about books that I was sent, I was sent another book that I actually already opened off camera. But thank you so much, Orion, for sending this book to me. This, this is a translated book from Korea. And this is I Went to See My Father by Kang Kyung Suk Shin. And I think that this one is going to be a really, really sad book. This is about a woman who goes back to look after her elderly father after losing her own daughter. And it's supposed to be a family epic, kind of very moving story about this family told through all different perspectives I believe. I think it's going to be very very powerful and very very sad and it's just been released in paperback so I'm really excited to get to this one as well when I'm in the mood for a good old cry but I do actually love Korean books because I do my reading around the world challenge I do read quite a lot of different translated fiction and Korea is one of the most consistently like countries that I usually absolutely love the books that I've read from there so that's going on the stack as well next up is a book that I recently got when I went shopping with Tasmin and Bex which was such a cute day and there was a vlog coming very soon or maybe it's already up I don't know the order of which I'm doing videos actually, but uh, we went book shopping around East London. It was so much fun. And then Tasmin actually ended up getting me one of their favorite books, which they have been obsessed with over the last like month, reading and rereading this children's series. And I am so, so intrigued. And so they kindly got me one as well. And I'm so excited to read Loki. Apparently it's very heartwarming, very funny, very sweet. And also I want to start reading more ch children's fiction because I like to read every single genre and I like to know what's being published in different genres and I like to know what's the best what's the best books that are coming out in every single genre so, and I think basically the concept of this is that Loki who takes many different forms has taken the form of a young child I think a little boy but it looks really sweet and it also won't take me long to read it all and I'm so grateful for Tasman for getting this for me so thank you so much Tasman also we'll link Tasman's channel down below if you want to go and follow them and you definitely should
especially if you're interested in children and middle grade fiction because they have amazing recommendations for all of those books. Next up, a couple of books I also have to thank a friend for and I'm so, so happy that I finally have these books. So this is a series that I recently read and I bought one edition and that is the Farsia trilogy. But I basically bought this book, the third book in the trilogy and I love these old fashioned style of this book. But I randomly found one in a charity shop one day and then I looked up trying to get the first two books in the same kind of style but basically they were selling on ebay for like 60 pounds but then my friend alice my book pal al basically went and found she has the best luck in charity shops and found the first two in the series in the same style so she grabbed them for me which is so so sweet so kind of her and so now I have a matching set and I am so, so excited about it. So this is the first book, The Assassin's Apprentice. And this is the second book, The Royal Assassin. And I just love these old fashioned styles. Like these little kind of like character portraits are so funny to me. They're so nostalgic. Obviously, as you can tell, these books came out a long time ago. They are classic fantasy. They are long, they are slow, but they are also weirdly very cozy. And now I'm so happy to have like a matching set, which means I now actually have a double with the books that I ended up buying. This is what the new covers look like. Hold on, let me show you. So these are what the newer covers look like, which I actually really like as well, but I don't love them nearly as much as the other ones. So I will be probably unhauling and getting rid of these as well at some point. Next up is a book that I'm actually currently reading, but I don't believe I showed it to you when I did get it. And that book is The Sunlit Man by Brandon Sanderson. Forgive me if I have already shown you this, but I don't think I do. This is the fourth and I think final, but I do think that he's doing a new secret project this year. But out of the four secret projects that Brandon Sanderson did last year, this is the fourth one. And I was doing pretty well keeping up with all of them as they were being released last year until it got to this one. And it just like the end of the year overtook me and I haven't got to it until now. But I have already started this and I'm absolutely loving it. It's very much sci-fi leaning, which is very fun. I do really enjoy Brandon Sanderson sci-fi and it is a Cosmere novel. So this is set in his wider universe with characters that we already know and love. But what's quite fun is at the beginning, I'm not sure, like I wasn't sure which character this was going to be about. But as you read, it kind of becomes more and more obvious, especially if you've read a few of his series but it's very much a Cosmo novel as in it mentions a few of the other characters or plots that are going on in multiple other series so not just one it's absolutely full of easter eggs i would say it's probably not the easiest place to start if this is like going to be a your first introduction to the cosmere because there's so many easter eggs i think that Part of my enjoyment so far of this book has been being able to see those easter eggs and kind of piece together what's happening based on my knowledge of other books but i'm enjoying it so far basically it's about a man and he arrives on this planet and this planet is basically very very close to the sun so surviving is very difficult and he can't speak the language or understand anything that's going on and basically has to try and survive and i'm only about 90 pages in but i've read those 90 pages very very quickly it's very quick it's very readable as with all brandon sanderson books so i'm enjoying it i'm not sure where i'm going to rank it in terms of the other secret project books or even the wider cosmere but i'm enjoying it so far we will see where it gets to i'm definitely intrigued but i would say don't start here if you're starting with brandon sanderson or even don't start here if you're just wanting to read secret projects because it's definitely the fourth, I think, for a reason. There's a lot of other knowledge that you should have that will enhance your read of this book. So that is The Sunlit Man. And then finally, oh, you can see the stack building up now. <laughs> and then finally, I'm just going to quickly go through the books that I got in a recent vlog. So if you don't watch my vlogs, then you should definitely go and watch them. But these are books that I recently got in a charity shop book haul vlog that I did. So I'll just go through them very quickly in case you have already seen that vlog. But the first one I got is The Devil in the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. I'm so excited about this one. I do think there's a chance that I won't like this, but I'm still very much intrigued by this author. I read his book, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, and I loved it. It's like such a strange and fun mystery. It kind of turns all the tropes upon its head, and I just really love how inventive it is. I think then this is his second book, and my brother, who also loved the first one, didn't love this one nearly as much, but I'm still very intrigued and I really want to read it. I think this one takes place on a ship. I think a pirate ship or something. I'm excited about this one. And I also got it for £1.25, so you cannot beat that. Next up, one that I'm even more excited about now after I posted that vlog, because lots of people in the comments of that vlog were saying that this is just 
an absolutely amazing book and they can't wait for me to read it so it's got me more excited and that is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. This is going to be so good I think to read like this is one of the OG like best historical fictions ever. This is based around Thomas Cromwell and it is a Tudor time like historical fiction but I've just heard incredible things and also everyone in the comments were saying that it's literally incredible. It is still very dirty. I need to clean the front of this book. But I also love how it looks and this is also a very long series but I think that it'll be really fun and I just definitely want to read it. I've only heard amazing things. Next up in vast contrast a tiny skinny little book called Foster by Claire Keegan. I've heard amazing things about this author. She also wrote small things like these which I heard is just absolutely beautiful book as well. This I'm really glad I got for like such a good price because I would have probably paid full price for this like a tenner and it's such a slim little book so I believe Claire Keegan is an Irish author yeah and this is set in Ireland so I could also do this for my reading around the world challenge but this is based around a girl and she goes to stay with a family I think she's being fostered because it's called foster she stays with them for the summer but there's something maybe that's like being hidden from her but she's having like an amazing time staying with this family and I'm really excited about this one. I'm like hoping for a good cry, like a happy cry. That's what I want to get out of it. So hoping that that's what that's going to give me. Next up, another really long book, but I'm so excited about this one as well. Although I am nervous. This is The Luminaires. Is it Luminaires? Yeah, The Luminaires by Eleanor Catton. Another historical fiction, another one that I think is like actually quite a str strange kind of intricate mix of lots of different genres. But I do think it's historical fiction. I think it's like kind of a mystery story or like murder mystery trying to figure out different crimes it is set in New Zealand as well by a New Zealand author this won the Booker Prize in 2013 and I've heard incredible things about this author and I also just absolutely love this cover like I'm obsessed with this cover so cannot wait to do that one as well and then the final book that I want to quickly show you is Patti Smith Just Kids I picked this up also in a charity shop for £1.50 and all the cool hot girls are reading this and I just feel like I'm a cool hot girl and I need to have this memoir on my shelf to read it even though I'm not really a celebrity memoir type person I don't know anything about Patti Smith but this is basically about her life and her relationship with this guy <laughs> but I think it's just about being a cool lady in the 1970s in New York in like the bohemian punk music scene so hopefully that's good and I think it's supposed to be very well written so excited about this one also another quite iconic cover that I really love so that is all of the books that I wanted to show you for this haul I have a huge stack of books here but thank you so much for watching this video and if you are new here then please remember to subscribe and also like this video and go back and watch all my other videos thank you so much for watching this haul and unboxing video I hope you enjoyed I hope it inspired you and some of your book purchases and I will talk to you again soon bye